Hi everybody and welcome to Different Leaf the podcast. I'm Britt Smith, now officially living off the land. So we're getting into day 60 something of quarantine here in Massachusetts and that means it's about day 50 since I started my home grow operation. Like a lot of you out there, I put a bunch of veggies in the ground early on and when the recreational marijuana shops closed, I hit up a friend, I got a few clones and I started my very own indoor grow. While I do know my stuff about the smokable version, I am far from an expert on how it grows. So while a lot of us are in lockdown in cities and apartments, I wanted to know more about the world of growing cannabis in small spaces. So this week, we're talking to Asia Atwood, the CEO of Trella Technologies. Asia is a mechanical engineer who cares a lot about sustainability and the issues of climate change, and she invented an automated plant training system that helps plants grow horizontally, which is proving to be a great tool for cultivators in confinement. As always, after I chat with Asia, I'll have your latest New England cannabis news. Hey, Asia, how's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm doing all right. It's a, it's a whole different world right now. It's definitely um, a little bizarre, but I'm settling in. Yeah, yeah. It's um, Every day is different. It's like one day, you're like, I'm good. And then you have a day where you're like, this is not feeling good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep having a couple of days where I'm like, actually, I could live my whole life just from this house and I'm I'm set, you know. And then there's other days where I just miss other humans and I miss like going to restaurants and, you know, the basics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in yeah. that mood right now where I miss going out in restaurants right now, but, yeah. but I'll, I'll be fine. <laughs> so uh, tell me a little bit about your company, about Trello, because um, I, I've read up about uh, the, the basics, the idea of, um, you know, that, that you train the plants to grow sideways. Um, how did this even so <laughs> it was my own an problem. issue that you were aware of? <laughs> yeah, so I started growing back in 2015 um, in my own home, but I was traveling a lot at the time and um, had things on, you know, I had mm-hmm. timers set for my lights. I had something for my nutrients, but I just didn't have anything to control when I returned, uh, you know, the fact that my plants were now running into the lights. Um because they had just grown so much while you're away. So I didn't have anything that would, you know, make sure that I had a nice even canopy that was spread out nicely. And screen of green is a a way to train the plants by hand to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, And, but you have to be there every other day. So because I was traveling, I wasn't able to keep on top of it. Um, So I was looking for something that would help me with that. And um, I was part of another agricultural technology startup where I was already kind of getting into learning about hydroponics and um, aeroponics and and lights. So I knew that there were solutions for that out there. I just didn't couldn't find one for this particular problem. So I got together with um, my my co-founder, Dre, and said, is this something we can do? We're both engineers. Let's try it out. So we uh, worked on several prototypes over the years. We built five different designs and done five different sets of of grow trial testing. And uh, we were also able to figure out a way, and this was kind of, we stumbled into this. We were also (laughs) able to figure out a way to uh, reduce how much light we really needed to to grow the plant. Um, So if if anyone's not familiar with Trello Grow LST, It's um, a system that automatically controls the height of the plant by gently training it to grow sideways versus allowing it to grow vertically. So it's it's gently growing it sideways and just kind of taking the top of the plant and moving it down a pathway. And as that plant is growing, um, it's going further and further down that path. We decided, why don't we sync the lights above to only go on as that plant develops? Um, So that way we're not using a lot of lighting over that canopy area that we really don't need. Um, and we'll turn it on when we need it. So we, so we want to play around with that some more. We want to play around with that at scale. Um, and we're looking uh, for elite R&D partners to help us with it. I mean, a lot of people right now have uh, started growing their own vegetables. And since the rec shops all shut down, a lot of us are growing our own marijuana at home as well. I got to say that's, you know, certain states have um, more access to to be able to legally grow at home. Massachusetts, we're lucky here we can. So as soon as the rec shops shut down, honestly, as soon as the whole lockdown started, I told my husband, hey, we need to start growing our own food. This is going to affect the supply chain um, for, for months, maybe years to come. And we might not feel it at first. You know, 
we're running out of toilet paper and all that right now, but <laughs> you know, down the road, I can see mm-hmm. this sort of impacting um, our fresh food supply and our marijuana supply. Um, and because we jumped on it really soon, uh, really early into this pandemic, luckily our, our fruits and veg and our marijuana is really coming along now. So as a first time homeowner, like I bought my house a year ago. So this is the first time I've had a yard and the first time I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm so excited to be growing. But this is my very first time really putting together a whole garden for myself. And it's not coming easy. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm making mistakes. Um, it's, it's not, you know, something that you can just read one book on and pick up. There's a lot to learn. And so yesterday, um, I was turning the flowers mm-hmm. from the veg phase to the flowering phase. Um, and I have a couple of mentors that are co- kind of talking me through it. And they said, now is the time to start pruning. And I was like, yeah. oh, Lord, um, that's terrifying. I don't know what to cut and what not to cut. And there's so much to learn about growing weed. And as I'm cutting, you know, the plant's starting to wilt immediately. <laughs> but I, I think I finally figured out how much pruning you need and also how much support you need for these plants. So I'm staking things into the ground and like tying them on to try and, you know, help it stay upright. Um, and it's just sort of dawning on me now that I'm doing the growing myself just how necessary this piece of technology is um, and to use efficiently use the space, efficiently use the light and to also just sort of give support to the plant, you know? Yeah. 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 That, that's it. Um, and that's the great thing about growing is you, you learn and, and from your mistakes and you fig, you figure it out. And um, I'm learning every day myself too. And we did something similar. It was like, okay, it's time to grow our own food. I mean, we were growing our own cannabis and I suggest anyone that has, space, ability, or interest to grow your own food, grow your own cannabis, get going on it right away. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's so freeing to be able to have your own supply. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, uh, it really but, is. Yeah, they, um, I, and I always say to people who are interested in Trello Grow LST, if this is your first time growing, do it without tech. Do it slowly. Start with the basics. Get comfortable. Make those mistakes. Learn what you really need. And then go out mm-hmm. and look for all these little gadgets and tech things. And and if you're growing at scale, then you want to look at, you know, higher level tech like Trello Grow LST and things like that. But um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And it's fun just to try and have fun and make mistakes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm figuring out sort of what, what not to do and, and what to do. But I'm also finding this a really nice few hours every day that I get to spend kind of tending to the plants and I have my fingers in the soil and um, I I put on classical music because uh, I've heard that that helps plants and so I just honestly I'm sitting around like hanging out playing in the dirt listening to classical music I can't think of anything more yeah, relaxing yeah, than yeah. That. or some good reggae too is good to put on for plants like high frequency oh, yeah. music they call it you know so different types of music don't work as well oh is there research into like certain music that yes, plants there is. like yes there is I can find some information for you and send it. Um, I attended a, a real small like panel with a woman that was talking about um, how she plays music and measures the frequency through the plant. So they actually are, are taking measurements of how the plant's responding as they're playing different sounds and different um, t- tunes. So yeah, there's lots out there. That's incredible. When I first got into trying to figure this out, and you know, I'm not, I, I don't come from a farming background. I learned how to grow cannabis. And that was kind of, I put a lot of energy into that and and tried to learn just that and found that I had a problem and something amused came to me and, and, and helped me visualize this idea. And with the help of the team and Dre, we were able to kind of see it into reality. But quite honestly, um, the plant kind of speaks to you and gives you information. So I completely agree mm-hmm. with, you know, the likes of George Washington Carver that the plants are alive. They're speaking to us. We're speaking to them. Um, so the environment that you create around your plants is very important. The music you play to them is important. How you prune, how you trim, how you touch them, it's all important. Um, so, yeah, I, I enjoy that time with the plants. And I, wow. <laughs> you, when you're looking when you're looking at a plant every day to just to see how it responds to the smallest movement, you start to get kind of attached to it. Yeah, I swear. While I was playing the music, the fan leaves started sort of moving, and um, as soon as I clip one little fan leaf off the whole arm sort of retracts and turns over and the leaves went upside down and then uh, I, I staked mm-hmm. it and I just sat there and played music and watched the leaves turn back over again really slowly for like 20 minutes it was 
super meditative almost to connect with a plant in this way and just watch it recover and heal. Um, it's an amazing thing. I, I've grown weed once before. I tried to do it hydroponically when I was in college. And like you said, I, I really jumped in at the deep end, um, not just trying the basics first. And the plant died. You know, I, I, you miss chemicals for one day and you've, you've wrecked it. Um, but I never connected with the, the actual plant itself as uh, like I am during this phase. And I think that might sort of be because I'm almost treating it more like, you know, we're in this together, me and you plants. I need medicine. You know, you want to grow. We're going to help each other through it. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it's like a pandemic really, really shows you what's important. I'm connecting with my food in a very different way as well. I don't want to throw out any of my um, vegetables. You know, I'm just a little more appreciative of where my stuff's coming from right now. Yeah. And I think that is, you know, there's a pro and con to every experience. And some of the pro in this is a lot of people are starting to think that way. I think to me, myself included, I look at things completely different than, <laughs> than I did, mm-hmm. you know, six weeks ago. Well, not everything, but a lot of things. I look at them completely different. I interact with my food the same way. So I feel you. Um, so what's your story about how you first learned to grow? Because you said that you uh, you just sort of started by yourself. You didn't come from, from any kind of farming background. How did you get into it? I got into this like research mode on the cannabis industry in like 2013, 2014. You know, there was a buzz that was building yeah. before it got legal. And I was just kind of watching and learning and, and, and thinking to myself, hmm, I, I'm, I'm interested in this industry. I wonder what's going to happen. So I wound up being part of a... Um, another startup where they were trying to grow one cannabis plant in a container, similar to like leaf. Um, they, they had products like that out, out there now. And during that project, it was when I had to dig into what does it take to actually grow a plant? What are all the necessities and how can we create, you know, something technical that will be able to provide all of these things. So I started reading lots of books, um, doing some online courses. And then I also went to the New England um, Grassroots Institute, which is here in Massachusetts. When I attended New England Grassroots, they were in Quincy, Massachusetts at the time. So I would um, go to that class. That was an eight-week course, three hours, eight weeks. And I enjoyed it and just soaked it up like a sponge. They did a really great job with that course. Um, And I think during that course is when you were able to finally start growing legally. And I was trying to convince my wife to allow me to grow before that, but she was like, no. (laughs) (laughs) So when it finally was legal for me to grow in the home, it was great timing um, because I was taking this course. I was I'd just gotten into this project and I had the ability and I had the interest to just kind of delve and dive into it and made those mistakes of buying too much, you know, trying to going too fast and um, really had to learn to back up a little bit and let's start with the basics, get that squared away. And then you can get into the fancy Mm -hmm. things. It was kind of a gradual learning experience for me, but I I had, um, I did have to go out and find resources. And luckily at the time there were lots of resources available. That's such fortuitous timing that you, (laughs) you were learning right at that moment. (laughs) So your wife sounds like a stickler for the rules. That's for sure. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) I was going to say, I wouldn't say that, but then I was like, no, you can't. You have to say yeah. that. Yeah, she's like, the moment that it's legal, now you're good to go. Okay. This is also kind of a, a big part of of what your um, your founding is of your company, is that you're really interested in the climate change angle of this. Um, so this is an interesting time where we're all sort of staying inside and pollution levels are definitely going down and, the, you know, the the world is starting to heal slightly. But I think that we're still, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we're still somewhat on the same track that we were with climate change. So we still got to start considering more indoor growing of not just marijuana, but vegetables as well, right? Yeah, um, the climate is changing. And I think we allow some people to take over the conversation by trying to figure out, well, what's the why? We can get to the why eventually, but right now there's an immediate change happening. We can see it. You can go outside. Everyone's experiencing it. Um, so the the rate of change, may we may have some control over that, but the fact is, is if you're in a coastal location, if you're close to water, if you're in a place that's having wildfires, um, you know, it, you have to start thinking differently about the environment. 